Okay, it's day 99. This is part one, and everyone knows the Bob Mueller story, the highly enriched Mueller story, where he takes the uranium up the up the tarmac to sample it, and he's in Tbilisi, Georgia. What most people don't remember, though, was that uranium was captured, the quarter pounder, the $8 million quarter pounder, was captured three years before, uh, I believe also in Georgia. Now, that's because he was saying he was doing a sting operation uh, with the Georgia Intelligence Services, and uh, they had got this. Now, did Bob take that back to a national laboratory and use it for experimentation, maybe to solve a really tough problem, which is getting this plutonium, this nasty plutonium, that is inside all this Russian uranium. This is the stuff that's so reactive. It's the stuff that causes that you can use for nuclear weapons. It causes uh, death and radiation. It's so super radioactive. Is that what he did with his Q clearance? Now, what you're not supposed to do when you have a Q clearance, and, and trying to eliminate nuclear proliferation is a good idea. Don't get me wrong. I think Bob Mueller was doing the right thing. But if he then turned around with maybe Alex Soros and invested it in the Cayman Islands in the Mellon Optima Fund, that wouldn't be good. Or the Ivy Fund, um, that wouldn't be good. And and creating a corporation called U.S. Enrichment and then doing a, a joint deal with the company, Australian company that does that technology, that laser separation technology, Silex, that wouldn't be a good e deal either. Then going and finding Russian operatives and Russian nuclear personnel to install into U.S. enrichment, like maybe Pavel Krupnik, that wouldn't be good either. So all these things aren't good. That's sort of like taking people from the megatons to megawatts program, which I call megatons to megabucks, and instead of managing that s supply line, it's really turning it into a rat line by installing your cronies in there and then secretly using third parties to invest for you in the in the Caymans. That's what that is. Well, did that happen? Did Bob Q, uh, Mueller misuse his Q clearance, or maybe he has a higher clearance than that, maybe going all the way up to a victory clearance? Well, here's an agreement, November uh, 1996 with Silex, okay, with the United States Enrichment Corporation for uranium enrichment. Now, when did this become public? Well, not really until last year, hmm, with these investigations. Interesting. So this is a secret agreement. Did Hillary know about this? Did Andrew McCabe know about this? Did Rosenstein know about this? Did Comey know about this? Did Andrew Weinstein know about this? Did they invest also through Alex Soros in the Caymans. We really don't know, but we need to know. We need to know the full details of Uranium One. We need all the emails from all these folks because when the other memo comes out about how they're attacking Trump to deflect uh, the real Russia collusion, this needs to come forward. You're going to sit, these guys aren't the uh, Boy Scouts that everybody thinks they are. Well, I, I don't think anybody thinks Andy uh, McCabe or Rosenstein or Comey now is a Boy Scout, but people still have this Boy Scout image of Bob Mueller, and I think this connection here to Alex Soros with these Cayman Island funds, the Mellon Optima, this Ivy Fund, which looks even worse, it changes its name every two years, um, and then this kind of playing, tampering with a U.S. nuclear regulatory uh, program, which is this megatons to megawatts. Megatons should be uh, megatons to megawatts should be megatons to megawatts. It shouldn't be megatons to megabucks. Shouldn't be megatons to megabucks. Okay, so um, one other note: Trump's meeting with Kagame. I've called this in the past the CIA School of Mines. I'm making fun of the Denver School of Mines. CIA moves their headquarters out to Denver. I've done a lot of JTTF articles about how. When you get into mining, all of a sudden you kind of become Rockefeller again. Rockefeller hired these guys, these uh, kind of scabs that were, um, you know, he dressed a few of them up in bowlers and gave them walking sticks and they called them Pinkertons and they looked like gentlemen that were, you know, worried about when tea time was. And in actual fact, the people he hired were just killers. And they basically just cleared railroad lines and then cleared land and and swindled after they murdered husbands they swindled widows out of their land with through a whole sort of life disruption and gaslighting so this isn't really what we want we don't want the CIA school of mines infiltrating our 
uh, excuse me, we don't want the CIA a school of mines infiltrating all of our police departments with something called JTTF. At least I, I don't think we do. So if you want to look at that uh, earlier episode, you'll see me dive a little bit more into the Silex, the 98.4 yesterday, I dive into the Silex. The, Navy's, and the, the Navy's use of the U.S. Geological Survey in other countries like Congo for the uranium or cobalt for the uranium or for Afghanistan for the uranium and also the lithium. You just see this repeating pattern over and over again. It's the it's the CIA school of, of mines. It's also kind of the FBI school of mines if you're talking about the highly enriched group at the top. So and here's the megatons, the megabucks if you want to watch that. So a lot of the stuff I realize people say, why are you talking about Africa? Why are you talking about Peter Thiel, you know, in and Gambia and his interests over there with Palantir? Well it all plays together. It's just all been separated so that you can't see it as one thing, but it all really plays together. And finally, uh, coincident. Okay, so about a year ago, I did a whole bunch of things coincidentally on sort of the Colorado School of Mines, the CIA School of Mines, and Rockefeller's Pinkertons, that concept. And this, I talked about this Greg Ballard guy who, to me, seemed like it was uh, kind of the new version of the Pinkertons. Here he is, all caring and so forth. But it turns out he's an ex DHS guy, he's a ex CIA guy, and they leave trash everywhere they go. Uh, they do these sexting operations, they have these low-like fry-tag cameras, and it's Operation Underground, and I call it Operation, it was Operation Underground Railroad, and I call it Operation Underhanded Railroading, because that's really what they're doing. Um, not unlike Rockefeller 150 years before. Um, also, just I was on a roll that day with Truth. I, I normally try to restrain myself, but I, I talked about this pipeline of the Mayo Clinic and the Cleveland Clinic of doctors into the U.S. and this kind of credentialing overseas and these practices overseas about prisoners who didn't need their organs anymore or people would be thrown off roofs and they didn't need their organs anymore if there was a labor dispute and then there was all these hospitals doing these transplantations. Uh, Jason talks about this with this German hospital kind of oddly out of you know the way of just kind of just didn't quite sit right. What are the, What's this German hospital doing here? Well you know sometimes there's a German hospital close by for organ uh, to receive organs that prisoners don't need anymore or workers who do labor disputes don't need anymore. You want those close. You want those uh, those uh, items close. And then I also, I was on a roll, I did Home and Square as well. And again, are we doing organ harvesting for prisoners who uh, don't need their organs anymore? Um, I talked about all these shootings and how you could pay a bounty. Now the CIA does this overseas. They'd never do it in the United States. They'd, they'd pay a bounty. Uh, for a dead body, they can recover the bone marrow, um, and that bone marrow, of course, could be used for cord blood uh, type applications for bone marrow type transplants and so forth. Very, the most valuable thing in your body, right? So, uh, this is just kind of like the dying core, uh, you know, playbook here that's happened over and over, pattern and practice. And again, if you haven't seen those episodes, you can go back a year. They're better now than they ever were because so much stuff has come out to prove the conspirators were actually involved in all these things. Yesterday um, came out that the CIA is definitely involved now in the in the memo. And the memo, four-page memo, is going to talk about that, and the underlying documents are going to talk about John Brennan's involvement with Andy McCabe.